Oh, that was amazing. Uh, thanks. Beginning to end. July. That was perfect. That was a perfect episode. No, I'm just crying. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Reject Nation? We're going to watch Brooklyn Nine Nine, episode 10 today. Just to catch you up on this little copyright claim partial block journey. Right now, as a film in this, only episode 7 is partially blocked. Here's hoping this one goes okay. You know, I think the department in Brooklyn Nine Nine does such a fine job because they have quality coffee. Okay. Are you telling me this because you constantly smell like coffee? No, I'm telling you this because it's important not to settle for mediocre coffee when you could have today's video sponsor deliver it right to your door at Roastery Peak Freshness. And shut up! It's a condition. Tr transition? Big thanks to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. John, why don't you go ahead and tell them what Trade Coffee is all about and what makes it so great? Yeah, I'm getting there. Would you give me a second, could you? Trade helps you discover new coffees from local roasters across the nation, and then matches you with your own personal selection, roasted and shipped in compostable packaging within 24 hours of your order. What does compostable mean? You don't know what... You're so stupid. Why don't you just ask me how to get started? Being so mean. How to get started, Greg asks. Well, let me tell you. To start, you'll head to Trade's website, take the quiz to establish your taste and experience, then you'll choose your delivery schedule, and finally, rate the coffee you're matched with so Trade can keep you stocked with roasts that you'll love. Wow, really sounds like Trade would help save you a trip to the grocery store. Oh, wow. Bravo, Greg. You remembered a talking point. Seriously, you're like starting to hurt my feelings. They have a first match guarantee, which basically says you'll love your first bag or they'll send you a new one totally free. Out of the three roasts Trade sent us, I started with this one from Doma Coffee Roasting Company. It's their Carmela's Blend. It's got notes of brown sugar, which I definitely picked up with my own tongue. I will not be returning this, so good job, Trade. <laughs> wow, sounds like Boyle would really love Boyle would really love this, yeah. I saw, I saw that joke coming a mile away, too. <sighs> Dang. You know, I'd sure like to, you know. Don't trade, trade me out, ha ha. You know what makes comedy work, Greg, is when you're not so dang predictable all the time. So if you're interested in trying some new and delicious coffee, the first 100 people to head on down to that description box, use our special link, and enter code REALREJECTS50 will receive 50% off in their first bag upon sign up, plus free shipping. That sounds awesome, but you know, can I finally try some of that coffee? You're the one who smells. What? What's going on? We're playing Boyle Bingo, Thanksgiving edition. Everyone filled out their cards with possible Charles-related scenarios. First to bingo gets 100 bucks. Boyle says gobble, gobble, gobble. Well, now that I know you want me to say that, I'll just say it with two gobbles. Gobble, gobble. No. Gobble. Yeah, it just, it just sounds right that way. I don't like this game. Ha! Boyle objects to Boyle Bingo. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I feel you, Boyle. <laughs> Sitting over here quietly all day and doing nothing. Oh! Anybody have Boyle Falls on the floor? No one? That's a victory for Boyle. Boom. Boyle says no! No. <laughs> I feel for you, Boyle. You be Boyle. Absolutely. Everyone has a John Bingo card. <laughs> I'd be Andre Brower. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> First character I think of. I was doing a bust. Cocaine! Thanks, Lucius. Cocaine. Whole thing turned into an awesome car chase. <laughs> it's me, Johnny Law. <laughs> That's really well done. Yeah. Jump up that shutter speed. The whole holiday is based on overeating. We should be wearing velvet tracksuits and diapers. Jacket and tie. Rose is even wearing her formal leather jacket. It's the one without any blood on it. And you're gonna give a toast about what you're thankful for. Start preparing. Oh, I prefer not to prepare for my toasts. I just wing them like scat jazz. The door couldn't shut because of your empty pizza box. Pizza, please. This is a butternut squash and truffle butter flatbread. My lunch is ruined. My chicken, my potatoes, my pasta, my meatballs. So this is your lunch for like the month? I need to eat 10,000 calories a day to maintain muscle mass. My wife made me all of this before she left town with the kids. That was everything in my fridge. Well, Boyle can duplicate it. Absolutely. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew about the Thanksgiving dinner I'm hosting for the squad after work. Yes, I received your 
save the date decorative gourd and this beautiful handcrafted card of a turkey wearing a top hat. It's a pilgrim's hat. Where's the buckle, Santiago? <laughs> <laughs> so I will attend your dinner. Cool. Yeah, don't worry about it either way. It's not a big deal. <laughs> I'm going to give a toast, tell him how thankful I am to have him in the precinct, and officially ask him to be my mentor. Wait, are you only hosting dinner because you want to suck up to Holt? You said you were only coming to see if my apartment was the reason I was single or if it was my personality like you suspected. <laughs> Same to you, Your Honor. Oh, what judge were you talking to? That was my mother. You call your mom Your Honor? She's a federal judge in the Ninth Circuit. What else would I call her? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. All open cases are assigned. Come on, there's gotta be something I can investigate. All right, well, when there's nothing, there's nothing. You know what we can do? Whoa! Don't worry, sir. I will stay here all night figuring this out. You want an excuse to skip Santiago's Thanksgiving dinner because for some reason you refuse to celebrate this holiday like a normal person. I want to do what I do every year. Sit at home, watch football, and eat mayo nut spoonsies. Those are spoonfuls of mayo sprinkled with peanuts. That's revolting. Maybe so, but it's what I invented when I was six because my mom was working, so I had to make dinner for myself. My sad story trumps your insult. Jake, 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 Jake. <laughs> <laughs> If a case opens up, it's yours. But if not, you will be at Santiago's as a professional courtesy. Well, I gotta say, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Oh, look at that depression glass. I have to practice my toast. God, how long is that? Eight pages. Single spaced? Double sided. Santiago style. <laughs> my body is starting to digest itself. No eating until the captain gets here. I'd rather spend Thanksgiving at your house than with my sister. Things you find at the beach. For us, I had seagulls. Good one, Diana! Ice cream break! Yay. Ugh. The Holt at your house, surrounded by these idiots? Guaranteed train wreck. Thanks for the invite. <laughs> he's here! Okay, he's here, everybody. Be cool. <laughs> Why do you have your shirt off? I can't spill food on your shirt if you're not wearing one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. I am thankful that Thanksgiving only comes once a year. People stuff themselves, and then at midnight, they run to appliance stores and trample each other to death. <sighs> When I was a little girl, playing cops and robbers with Excuse my me. brothers. Oh no. Please, continue, Santiago. No. Someone stole $10,000 from the evidence lockup. Yes. Oh, awesome. Why is that awesome? It's a case. You said I could hop on any case that came up. It's a Thanksgiving miracle. Fast forward, fast forward. Wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. OK, so here's our money. Fast forward. Hold it, hold it. Go back. There's our guy. Got him. OK. We should start by checking all the perps that were released from holding today. Good idea. And if it's none of them, we may miss Santiago's altogether. Thanksgiving is dead! <laughs> I'm eating. Mm. What's it needs? Potatoes, butter, a little milk. And I ran out of salt, so I used baking soda. Oh. Baking soda. I need a little bit of baking soda, but... Even if it is one of them, how will we know? Easy, if the guy on the footage was left-handed. We just give all of our suspects some made-up form to sign and see which hand they use. Punch it! <laughs> Good, did that, now punch it! Uh-huh, safety first, <laughs> punch it! Okay, see now I just feel like you're messing up. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, the toilet's overflowing! What? Ew, Scully, what did you do? And the night gets worse better. I, I didn't do it. Well, then who clogged it? Oh. Terry, you said you ate the whole turkey. Toilet. So oh, no. <laughs> you all ate those brownies I brought in last week? I thought they were erasers. <laughs> they were erasers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thanksgiving's over. I, I'm not done hanging out. Let's go to the bar. They serve food there. That's a great idea. Oh, look at that. Boyle saves Thanksgiving. Did you really say that? No, but it does say Boyle believes obvious lie. Damn it. Aww. Root for you, buddy. I'll play Detective Bart Barley. Tightly wound, hates violence against animals. And you're my partner, Gerald Jime. <laughs> but one, the murder of his wife. We're all to take this seriously. I am. As seriously as you're taking the search for the man who killed Jane Jimes. Your only clue? He wore a yellow sweater. You're considering it. Let's get in there. NYPD! What's going on? Right in the middle of carving turkey. I'm vegetarian. Eating meat is murder. I hate violence against animals. <laughs> oh, uh, 
We overlooked our release form. We were supposed to have you sign. We apologize. Yeah, he's right-handed. Let's go. What do you guys want? Sorry to bother you, sir. My partner here forgot about a form we need you to sign. What's happening, Donnie? What'd you do? I didn't do anything. What did Donnie do? I don't know what this is about. Why won't you ever believe me? Because I raised a liar. Shut up, Ma. Hey, don't talk to Ma like that. Don't you tell me what to do, Louie. Excuse me. Oh, God. Not the rules. <laughs> My wife was murdered by a man in a yellow sweater. <laughs> yes. It's the one case I can't solve. <laughs> yes. Don't fight with family. Don't fight with family. Sign this. <laughs> it's a hell of a breakthrough, James. I'm proud of you. <laughs> we just caught our man. He signed with his right hand. That's right, he did. But he didn't do it. He did. What? Couldn't help but notice you throw in those rolls with your left hand, boss. Not to mention this hoodie matches our security footage exactly. You stole that money when you came in to pick up your brother from holding today, didn't you? Damn it. <laughs> so where's the money now? It's not here. I bet it all in the football game. My bookie has it. Yes! The case continues. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, James. <laughs> His father was murdered by a bookie. <laughs> I know you miss him. <laughs> Our perp says the bookie operates out of a hidden back room. Ten dollars to play. Oh, we're just looking around. Forty dollars just to look around. All right, we'll play. Fifteen dollars to play. All right. <laughs> hey, rough night. Yeah, it certainly hasn't gone according to plan. Oh, no. Oh, Amy, I was ordering a drink called a rough night. It's tequila with a nicotine patch. Oh, gross. How do I get Holt to pay attention to me? Sure spends a lot of time on Peralta. I should start screwing up like Jake does. I can act out too, you know. Please do. <laughs> out, all of you. I think I'm getting the hang of this. These tiles are either game pieces or candy. I think I just won. The guy by the bathroom seems very interested in the commotion you just made. Yeah, Andy's been waiting for the toilet since we got here. Ten to one, that's not a bathroom, and he's a lookout. Let's go. They didn't arrest the other guy? What? They didn't arrest the other guy? No, I guess not. <laughs> the guy's They'll come money. back for him later once they find the money. <laughs> are you eating packing peanuts? I do keep a secret stash of food in the office. I knew it! <sighs> Where is it? There, the one with the water stain. There's a lot of food up there? Yeah. It's a smorgasbord. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, she has a gun. <laughs> okay, it's over. Thanksgiving time of death now. No, this will not be our Thanksgiving. All right, you all wait here. Give me an hour. Terry, to the door. I'm just going to put you down, man. Yeah, totally. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> Never mind. Let's go. What? It's really a bad rule. No, no, no. There's tons of illegal stuff happening in there. But they're watching the football game and I DVR'd it. I don't want to see the score. Aww. Okay, fine. We'll go get the stolen money. <laughs> no, put it down! Put it down! This is a weird request, but will you switch places with me? I really don't want to see the score! <laughs> Oh, yeah. Thank you. That's so much better. Oh, why are there so many TVs in here? <laughs> <laughs> this is hilarious. What's your problem with celebrating Thanksgiving? It's a sucky holiday. It's always sucked. My mom worked, my dad was gone, and I sat at home watching football. I came from a very formal family. My parents were not especially affectionate. Really? Your honor wasn't a big snuggler? <laughs> Well, that's nice, Captain, but I don't have a new family yet, so I guess I'm stuck with my awesome old tradition. What are you all doing here? Amy broke everything and got us kicked out of the bar. Then we got attacked by rats. It's the best Thanksgiving ever. <laughs> Happy Turkey Day! Right through there, gentlemen. Not a lot of places are open, so this will be a multi-ethnic, non-traditional Thanksgiving. It's a real culinary challenge. Give me 15 minutes, and then we feast. Make it five. And you eat with your eyes, so the plating alone takes... Five, boy! <laughs> hey, Boyle just spent a lot of money. Yeah, absolutely. Captain, hmm? I want to tell you something. Forget it. The moment's passed. Is this about your toast? Aww. Gina gave it to me. It's very well written. There are several compelling anecdotes. The fonts suit the tone. <laughs> I do feel, however, the word choice could have been improved in spots. I mark them 
awk for awkward. That was the best thing anyone's ever said to me. I marked them awk for awkward. He's <laughs> mentoring me. I'm here, I'm here. Aww. Hey. Aw, suited up. What are you wearing? Santiago said to dress up, so. Well, you look beautiful. That's my thing now, I'm just owning it. Hey, thanks for giving a copy of my toast to hold. That was nice of you. Aw. To be honest, I kind of gave it to him as a prank because I thought it would be super embarrassing for you. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so earlier at Amy's, I didn't give a real toast because I didn't know what to say. But since that time, a wise, unsmiling man named Gerald Jimes made me realize what I am thankful for. So I'd just like to say I am happy to be here with my family. Aww. Family with two black dads, two Latina daughters, and two white sons, <laughs> Gina, and... <laughs> I don't know what you are, some strange giant baby. <laughs> oh, no. That was perfect. Ooh, boil Christ, I got boiled bingo. <laughs> oh, boil. Oh, this is amazing. Uh, Beginning to end. Thanks. Beginning to end. July. That was perfect. That was a perfect episode. Feels so good right now. That was a perfect episode. It feels so oh, happy God. and warm. Uh, perfect. No, I'm just crying. <laughs> that's that's good. <laughs> that was perfect. That's the best perfect. That was perfect. I don't. I don't. I. I, I, I there's like literally. Uh, it was amazing in, in every every <laughs> avenue of it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Ah, uh, so perfect. I feel so warm and fit. It's perfect because it's like it's a hilarious episode anyway, but it also has all the sort of like heart swell you want out of some kind of holiday episode without sacrificing any of the kind of humor you come to the yes. show for. <laughs> you know? I think the only thing that if I have one tiny, tiny nitpick, just because I feel like it. I'm like, I, I feel like I gotta say something for some reason when I really I don't. You have to. <laughs> please, bring some rain to this parade. Um, Pick that knit. I didn't find the Terry food bit as funny as much focus as there was put toward it. Yes, yeah. That's I, about it. I feel <laughs> like it could have grown as a bit and it didn't really progress beyond one note of the joke. That was, that was about it. I mean, the thing with the rats and stuff was a really funny moment. Yeah. <laughs> that, was a, that was a hilarious yeah, ass yeah. moment. But other than that, literally everything was just <laughs> firing on all cylinders and like, every single department. Although when Terry ate the baking soda, that was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it progressed, well, and I mean, even him just unloading his entire refrigerator on the yeah. oil in the first part of the episode, like, there are definitely charming moments yeah, to, that, not gonna, to that bit. Yeah, I'm not going to deny it, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, oh, God, I, I'm just so I'm just so swelling with emotion. I don't have a, a singular clear thought here. I, I, I really thought that um, as predictable as the arc would be with Andy Samberg coming around and realizing who his real family is, it was it was just executed so well on such a hilarious journey because he's in such like avoidance yeah. the entire time and like the whole thing when he's out investigating with it was just fun to get like a true investigative detective episode as a B story with uh, Peralta and Holt. Yeah and watch them actually go out on the field together and really investigate. And the whole thing about like the make-believe and then the, like that whole make-believe <sighs> bit was hilarious. For just right from the start, it was so funny. That was Do I, we're cutting the turkey against that. <laughs> Peace, like just right in front, and then when Holt just declares, <laughs> "My wife was killed by the man in a yellow, yellow sweater." Oh, I've never really it. So funny. You should appreciate your family. Oh, that was it's, so funny. It's such a spontaneous, but like, like you're. And it's unexpected of his character. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> because you do expect him to maybe lay down the law, but absolutely not to commit to the bit. <laughs> yeah, it's so wonderful. And two, like, it, it makes sense just because it's like a family squabble he's witnessing mm -hmm. right in front of him. Yeah, it made sense that he resorted to it. It's just the last thing you'd expect is for him to ever pl play along or yeah. use that as any resort, yeah, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, a great unexpected moment. 
But like the littlest thing, every every joke here, most like 99%, the, most of the episodes have like, okay, it takes a few minutes. All right, now it's like yeah. really entered in the fun. But from like the very Dude, start. The Boyle Bingo, man. The Boyle Bingo bit was super funny and I love how it kept coming back around. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, this, this episode of like recurring gags galore. Yeah, it was nonstop. Right yeah. from the, like, the football game. Like, I loved how yeah. he was just trying to avoid the football game yeah. scores. I think it was because um, for certain things that, you know, we really care about, we we try to avoid spoilers on them. There's some things where we're like, I don't really give a shit. But then, uh, <laughs> but there are some things like, please don't spoil this for me. Like, um, yeah. So, like football. You, but no, so you can relate to, to something like yeah. childish as yeah. that. They're playing the thing that you've been saving for just the right occasion in the next room where we have to go do this bust. Yeah. They know their characters so well, like how Rosa's loving how shitty everything is going as the lining in it. But even right when she says you had to go ruin it by having me the best Thanksgiving at dinner I've ever had. Yeah. You know that she's appreciative. You know you yeah, still get I the validation that. Like, a, out of it. Yeah. What a great way for her to come around uh -huh. without having her say Great it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> like Boyle's plan worked and Boyle saved Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah Boyle literally saved he, Thanksgiving. He yeah. rose to the occasion. He did not let himself be flapped by the meme of his own enthusiasm. That's what I mean. It's bookended by that. Now, yeah. Like We make fun of how Boyle is about Thanksgiving and how important and spe special it has to be. And then in the end he's really the hero yeah. for it all. Yeah, absolutely. That's special. And Sorry. Or no, and, and, and I mean, poor Santiago. <laughs> just because, like, you know, everybody, like, ripping apart her apartment and whatnot. And, and just, like, I, I also like that, too, where, yeah, it's like you get the cop B story, but you also get, like, a very home life kind of reveal on her, at least. Well, she, yeah, she's a very, she's an old, old lady at heart. Yeah. Um, but would, you, would, yeah, with her uh, wanting the mentor. Yeah. Uh, and, like, the, 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 the thing about like character motivations is it's like you, when you talk about stakes within the character's goal what matters is how important that goal is to that person mm -hmm. and if you can sell the audience on that that's where the tension is wrung out of that's where the stakes are felt so like when it comes time for her speech and then he's interrupting you feel that and you're like i have to go leave like you feel that because no. you know and like if, if you're like pitching that as a plot like this this woman really wants to give a speech to, to have her captain mentor her but it's interrupted by a by a phone call at the police station has to go that doesn't sound like a big deal but the show does such a great job with her and she does such a great performance yeah that you know that this is life or death for yeah, her. And yeah, it's like the the pinnacle of things going wrong today. It's like yes. the final <laughs> kicker into this being the worst Thanksgiving possible. She needed it to be perfect. And I love how, uh, yeah, he reads her speech at the end and ultimately does start mentoring her. Like, it's such a sweet moment. Yeah. And Gina, this is the funniest she's ever been. Yeah. This whole time we've been watching it. She was hilarious here. Well, and it's I love, I love the joke about it that I brought brownies. I thought those were erasers. <laughs> yeah. It's such a funny line. <laughs> well, she, I, I love the way that her character seems to exist in this weird Venn diagram of like, yeah, like like it's summed up in the end to me when she's like, originally I was happy because I thought this was going terribly, but I guess in a way I'm kind of happy that it went okay. Either yeah. way, I'm happy. Yeah, because you think Gina, oh, she really has a heart and she tried to do something good, but she was just trying to embarrass her. an accident that it was good. <laughs> yeah. That. yeah, That is so funny. Yeah. Like, there's a, this brilliant comedy in this one. Yeah. And, and it really does get you in the feels by the yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's funny because like uh, uh, Yorma Takoni directed this, and he's the third of the Lonely Island, and it's certainly oh, really? yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it certainly had like, especially too, just in the rhythm and the pace, you know, a lot of that energy. But, oh yeah, this was captured great. Yeah. I, I was so oh, uh, dude, I'm so the, dazzled by this episode. The one chase down sequence with the whole like you know car chase and he's like running after the guy and it's like the really high shutter speed. It's yeah. all like clippy looking. And oh, then, brilliantly edited with that punchline. Yeah, <laughs> just getting into traffic. Yeah, immediately by the dump truck. Because <laughs> that is something I've thought about of, of like car chases. Yeah. I'm like. This guy's never like <laughs> just immediately like, hit traffic. If you get into car chase in Los Angeles at like 5 p.m., there's <laughs> no chance. <laughs> you're gonna get the odds you're gonna are run into traffic. Not yeah. in your favor, <laughs> but especially in New York City too. Oh, anywhere in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> it's so I was, I'd hate to drive. I don't like that's actually a big fear of mine is ever driving in New York City. Getaway drivers are paid the most out of any high squad in New York. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And, and yeah, I like the bits when they when they really allow New York to feel lived in. It's like, it's funny how no one at the precinct has like a thick New York accent. I know. <laughs> it's a common trope in New York shows. Yeah. Even in Friends had it. Like they, Matt LeBlanc used to do a little bit more of a New York accent and it just like went away. Yeah. Um, but no one at the precinct has it, but when they encounter other people, they all have, like, they thick all have liquid accents. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, like, that that whole house they stop in on is, like, the most New york New York <laughs> accent, like, family squabble stereotype possible. <laughs> yeah, this was wonderful. This was, uh, this was an amazing, uh, this was a, like, beginning to end, it was almost pitch, it was, like, almost perfect, like, so close to being a perfect episode. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I, I adored this one a lot. Like every everyone was great. Yeah, it's it's weird. All, all I can just keep saying is saying different. I, I, different all I'm doing is just great. repeating myself. <laughs> just saying it's great. It's so it's great. Like, it's, it's me this whole time yeah. talking about yeah, it. Yeah, you get your your you know character comedy like you come to expect. You know, you get the madcap rapid fire jokes, but you also get what feels like some very just genuine character beats within that. You know, it's really well done. Really beautifully done. Well, they pay attention to such great detail on on how to make certain things even funnier. Like even when Terry throws the turkey in the toilet when he's the last one, and he's like stepping on it, yeah. and he's just like looking out <laughs> as he's yeah. stepping. Out. Like what a ridiculous gag! Yeah. <laughs> he's just stuffing a turkey in the toilet. It's so stupid. That's so dumb. Never, never gonna fit in there. <laughs> everyone's resorting to throwing food in the toilet. It's hilarious. <laughs> It's a funny ass. Like this was, um, this this is a great. It's like a sketch. It's. The, I like when they go into like sketch comedy territory, but not breaking the realm of that. You're still a sitcom. Yeah, yeah, it's like they really grip the characters and they really motivate a lot with the characters, but they also just incorporate like silly gaggery to a degree. You know? Yeah, like it's there's a certain silliness baked within all the characters that somehow holds the more ridiculous stuff together. You know, and there was like a, a bit of a lethal weapon vibe about having Holt and Peralta out there <laughs> taking on the Chinese people. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe Jet Li will show up. It was Lethal episode. Weapon 4. <laughs> oh, yeah, we get Jet Li going. <laughs> All right, guys. Well. What did you love about this episode? <laughs> Leave your thoughts down below. Oh, man, I had, uh, that, that, was, that was brilliant. Hey, subscribe, click bells, hit like buttons, get by trade coffee. <laughs> Step by get some trade. Head, head, go to go to the link in the in the description. And get that coffee. Drinktrade.com. Oh, Patreon of the Day, day shout out. <laughs> Who you got, John? I got Robert Gunderson. Cause if there's anyone in our Patreon who sounds like a cold hardened cop. It's Robert Gunderson. I could see you now on the beat, resistant to having a partner, but then they give you a crazy new experimental robot sidekick or something. Gunderson and the droid. Wouldn't that be cool? And then they can solve crimes together in some kind of not too distant future where like robots have started to break the prime directive and hurt people and like, oh, that's not supposed to happen. Who can solve it? Gunderson and the droids. <laughs> Plus, you know, you would be stocked on cars. You're that guy you in the do... writer's room, huh? <laughs> yep. I write best alone. <laughs> and then occasionally I'll send you the script after I've come down from like a mountaintop where it's alone enough that I can hear myself think without judgment. <laughs> And you are the benefactor of that today, Robert Gunderson, because this is going to be my, uh, this is going to be our claim to fame. We're going to get this thing sold, man, and then your life is going to be public stories. Thank you, Robert Gunderson, for being part of our Patreon page. You mean a lot. Yeah. And whatever John <laughs> said about you. I hope you had fun. <laughs>